Hi, so this is my third period on the pair guard, and I feel like I've got a pretty good handle on how to handle the handle on the handle, how to handle the heavy flow and the pain. And I want to tell you about my experience with it and how I manage it. So this isn't going to be a fancy video or flashy video. I don't have any fancy music. All I have is just an anecdote of what I went through. So if I had two insertions and I was pretty sure I, after expelling one, I might expel the other, but my insurance covered it 100% and I was about to move. So I wanted something permanent. So I had the pair guard put in and I spotted for a few days and then I was fine. And everything was all in well until my first period came. And then something weird was going on. Um, there was a lot of discharge and I was nervous that it was coming out. I felt very, very sick as if I had the flu. So I went to urgent care because it got so bad. And the bleeding was very heavy, which I expected. What I wasn't expecting was so much pain and vomiting and feeling like I was literally had the flu. I thought I actually did. I stayed home from work for a couple of days and then I felt guilty for staying home. So I went to work and my boss told me to go to urgent care, which I did. I got tested, didn't have the flu. Also didn't have any STDs, um, got an ultrasound. IUD was exactly where it was supposed to be. Um, tested me for infection, no problems. So I just wasn't reacting too well for it or too well but I didn't want to pay to have it removed. So I left it where it was, decided to give it its time. And some things that I found helpful getting through that period, some things I learned from it is that you don't have to rely on one method of controlling the bleeding. It's okay to use more than one. For example, I bought a very large menstrual cup I had been using a smaller Diva cup for a while and I decided to try the bigger one. And with that, I also wore a pad just in case it leaked. And that ended up being a perfect setup for work. Pads, I don't personally like them. However, the period flow was so heavy and my job, I can't just get up from my seat whenever I feel like it. I have my breaks scheduled. I need to be there to answer the phone and I can't just cut a conversation off midway. So when I was at work, I was doubling up on everything. I was also staying with someone else. I didn't have my own place to live at the moment because I had moved and I had not settled in. So I was also running around a lot. I was commuting, which meant I had to sit in my car seat for an hour and a half and I was just very uncomfortable with the idea of relying solely on a cup or a tampon or even just a pad. So I combined them and it worked really, really well. Now, public bathrooms and menstrual cups are always going to be one of those things that people think is gross. And frankly, it, it's your blood. It's your bodily fluid. I mean, it's, it is yucky. It's blood. <laughs> There's no getting around that. I'm sorry. There's no getting around the ick factor. You just get used to it. And just know the fact that it is your body. It's your decision how you handle it. If you get the pair guard and your periods are really, really bad and you decide you don't want to deal with it, that's okay. Have it taken out. It's really easy. Very, very quick. So back to the public bathroom. I did frequently, I went as frequently as I could and the cup was not very full, yet I was leaking to the pad and I couldn't figure out why. And eventually I realized that the bigger cup was suctioned to my uterus, but it wasn't over my cervix. My cervix was still slightly too far to the side to actually be in the cup, so it was missing most of the flow. Once I got that fixed, I didn't need as frequent of visits. I found flushable wipes to be very, very helpful in cleaning up any kind of mess that I got on my fingers or on the toilet seats. Um, and the flushable ones are just perfect because you're not leaving trash behind. 
So I buy the flushable ones. It doesn't have to be this brand specifically. This is just the one that I picked up because it was on sale at the time. And it shreds and comes apart at the perfect rate when it goes in the water. You can just see it dissolve. And it's really, really nice because I feel like I'm being nicer to the environment. So another thing to help you down there is any kind of anti-itching cream. It doesn't necessarily have to be Monistat. I just happen to have this on me. Itching cream in case you do get itchy down there because you are going to sweat, especially if you're wearing a pad for a long period of time. So having something like this on you is really nice. Being at work. Another thing dealing with leaks is bringing extra underwear to work. In fact, buy a whole pack of underwear that you don't care about because it's going to get dirty. I think all of us women have underwear like that already, but I would just say bring some extra to work just in case. How about the pain? How did I deal with the pain? Again, I felt like I had the flu for that period, and then I had another period and had almost exactly the same experience, except this time I knew what was going on. And I chose to stay home anyway because I couldn't afford to be vomiting at work. So what did I do during that time? Well, heating pads are very, very nice. Heat is a wonderful thing and definitely helped make me feel better. But when I'm at work, I didn't want people seeing me just wearing a heating pad around because it just, I don't know, I wasn't comfortable because it's kind of obvious what's going on when you have such a small heater if you had like a giant blanket maybe it'd be different but it would just you know i never knew when it was going to be hot or when it was going to be cold in the office the temperature fluctuated so much so i bought these things they're those stick-on pads you definitely want the ones with the what is it capsicum treatments whether it's that or the brand name i actually liked the cvs one better shocking they take about 20 minutes to actually start working so you're gonna fill them on what I did was I bought the big ones and then I cut them into the size that I wanted them to be I cleaned that area of my body stuck it on had to wait a few minutes eventually it would kick in and it felt amazing um, once you peel it off is kind of burning afterwards like it still leaves a residue on top so like Peeling one off and then the thought of putting one right back on, I wouldn't really recommend it. You can wear them for a pretty long period of time and they still work. So you shouldn't be needing to switch these on and off more than I'd say twice a day. Another thing, there is just something about naproxen slash Aleve. The way it's made, I don't know. Something about it, it just makes it work so much better than ibuprofen. I swear to God, maybe it's just me, but even when I had the flu, naproxen always worked better. And this was very, very, very helpful. When I took, when I started taking this, there was a significant difference in the level of pain. Nighttime, when it's time for sleep, sleeping aid, I used it still use it during my periods. Melatonin could be a prescription, anti-anxiety medication, whatever works for you because you need to sleep. You need to sleep. And one of the best ways I found to deal with the pain was sleeping most of it off if I could. So sleep. What about when you're awake and you're outside? Maybe you have to walk like I did. Park in the garage and then I have to walk to work. And all that time to like self-reflect was incredibly frustrating because I had so much time to think about the pain I was in and to notice it. So here's an idea. Buy some wireless headphones. Plop them in your ears. If you have hair, go ahead and let your hair down. Nobody will know you're wearing them. And just listen to music, listen to podcasts, listen to something. If you don't have Bluetooth in your car and you can't connect your phone, you can connect it to the earpieces. If you're worried about it blocking too much sound, you can wear one earpiece and it is an excellent distraction from the pain. Absolutely wonderful. Exercise, that's on you. I choose not to do it when I'm on my period. I try to still move around, but I'm not lifting weights. I'm not doing yoga. I'm not you know, riding my bike like I usually would be. I'm staying still and I also started eating lots and lots of yogurt. It might be the placebo effect, but I feel like I do much better avoiding constipation and digestion issues that I noticed during my period if I'm eating lots of yogurt. 
I don't know the science behind it. I don't have a specific brand that I like. I I use different ones, whether it's Greek yogurt, Stony Brook, or cheaper brands, just whatever's on sale. But I think just having something that's like hydrating and soft, it just seems to go through better than when I eat harder foods. So that is my suggestion. Because when you're doing number two with a cup in, it's very uncomfortable. The cup has never come out on me during it, but it like the pressure of the cup and that at the same time is so uncomfortable. So I've been sticking to softer foods, not a liquid diet, just things that are softer, like um, even oatmeal, like if it's warm enough and soft enough, like it'll flow through pretty easily. I find even noodles, they're not the like, they're not liquid. They're not like as soft as oatmeal or say scrambled eggs, but I can eat that and feel okay without vomiting. But I just remember all of a sudden like covering my mouth, sprinting upstairs, throwing up in the toilet and my cousin's three-year-old boy knocking on the door asking if I needed help, if I was okay. And I was like, no, 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 I'm fine. Don't just wait outside for me. It'll be okay. And it was so embarrassing, <laughs> but the pain was horrible. This time around has been so different. I'm still feeling pain, but it comes in spurts, like nowhere near as bad as it used to be. Way, way better. The periods are still heavier than what I'm used to. I had regular periods before this. My periods are still regular. They're still following the normal schedule. However, they are heavier, but this time around I was prepared. So I knew where to put the cup. I knew what kind of pads I wanted. I knew to have a heating pad ready. I had wipes. I had sleep aid. I knew when to take my pain medication and when I didn't need it. I had, you know, music to distract me, videos to watch. Being the coronavirus, you're kind of stuck at home anyway. I knew to have other sets of clothes. Um, sometimes they even doubled up in layers if I was nervous. I bought, I even bought a bed sheet that has random designs of red. So if I got a dot on it, it wouldn't stick out as much. Um, so that was my kit for survival. That is how I made it through it. I had a cup, menstrual cup that I liked. I got wipes to clean up any messes that I got from that. I wore a pad just to make myself more comfortable. I got the heat adhesives for when I was in public and didn't want it as obvious that I was wearing a heating pad. I used naproxen to take care of the pain as opposed to ibuprofen anti-anxiety medicine to help me sleep. If you have some, if you don't, go ahead and grab something from the store like melatonin. The Whether it's a brand or genetic of these didn't seem to matter. And then of course those extra underwear when you're at work. So that is how I survived it. Feel free to shoot out some questions if you have any.